respected chairpersons. It's a matter of great pleasure and honor for me to be here today. And I'll be talking about the influence of creatine measurement method on carboplatin dosing and safety profile. This is not my research finding. I'm just going to give a scientific talk. I have no conflicts of interest to declare. So carboplatin, as we all know, is a platinum-based drug used in a wide variety of cancers, including ovarian cancers, head and neck cancers, lung cancers, and zoncell tumors. And its mechanism of action is exactly similar to that of cisplatin, but it differs widely from cisplatin in terms of side effects and its dosing strategy. So cisplatin is more emetic than carboplatin. It's more nephrotoxic, so it requires aggressive hydration. But the minus operation of carboplatin is much higher than that of cisplatin. Now regarding the dosing, cisplatin is dosed like any other cyclotoxic agent. Its dose is based on the body surface area, but carboplatin's dose is based on area under the concentration curve using the Calvert's formula. So Calvert published this landmark paper in 1989 while I was just two years old and this famous paper gave us this formula to calculate the dose of carboplatin which is still relevant today. So as you can see from this formula that the dose of carboplatin is given by the target AUC multiplied by GFR plus 25. So we see that the measurement of GFR is very very crucial while calculating the dose of carboplatin. But uh, how do we measure GFR then? So there are various methods to measure GFR. The, the best method is to use inulin clearance because inulin is renally inert substance. Or we can also use a radio nucleon marker like Calvert in his original formula. He had used chromium EDTA, a radio nuclear marker. But uh, using inulin clearance and uh, radio nuclear marker, it's very cumbersome. So for practical reasons, we use creatinine clearance instead. But there are a lot of problems with creatinine clearance. Uh, this is the formula to measure creatinine clearance. So uh, we need to measure urine volume over 24 hours, which is multiplied by the ratio of urine to serum creatinine. But you see, uh, there are a lot of problems with this because we need to collect urine over 24 hours and it's very cumbersome. So we have some formulas to substitute for that. Uh, the estimated creatinine clearance, it is given by a... There are many formulas for that, but uh, the two most famous formulas are the Cockroft-Gold equation and the Jellyfish equation as shown here. For some unknown reasons, the American gynecologists, they used to prefer Jellyfish equation, while all other departments, they prefer the Cockroft-Gold equation. And we also have a CKD EPI equation, and we have online tools to calculate this. But again, uh, the problem with creatinine clearance is that creatinine is not renally inert, uh, uh, renally inert like, like inulin. That means it is not only glomerularly filtered, but it's also secreted by the tubules. Therefore, the creatinine clearance is higher than the GFR by around 15%. Uh, and, and as we saw in the cockroft gold equation that uh, we can measure the estimated creatinine clearance rate using just a single value of serum creatinine. So measurement of serum creatinine becomes very crucial. And there are a lot of ways to measure serum creatinine. The classical method is the colorimetric method known as the Yaffe method. But uh, the problem with Yaffe method is that when we use Yaffe method, uh, then the serum creatinine value is higher than the true value by 0.1 to 0.3 milligram per deciliters. Now, this is a very good thing because uh, we said that creatinine clearance exceeds GFR by 15% and now if the creatinine value we calculate is higher, then that gap gets reduced and we get the value of creatinine clearance which is close to the value of the true GFR. But nowadays in developed countries like Japan, uh, we are using enzymatic method for measuring uh, creatinine. So by using enzymatic method or the IDMS method, the value we get of serum creatinine is the exact value, uh, unlike the Yaffe method. So the value of uh, estimated creatinine clearance will stay greater than the GFR. So there is always this gap of 15%. The estimated creatinine clearance rate will be higher than the GFR if we use the standard method. So if we use that value in the Calvert's equation, we'll get an overdose of carboplatin. So when we use enzymatic method, there is always a significant risk of overdose and thereby toxicity of carboplatin. And, uh, and Japan was the first country to introduce the enzymatic method. It introduced in 1990s, but US lagged far behind and US introduced this only by the end of 2010. And uh, in, in most of the European countries, it is yet to be standardized. And uh, based on my personal communication with a biochemist in Nepal, we are still using the Yaffe method. 
but I don't have any idea what, what India and other Slav countries are doing and unfortunately our international delegates are not here to educate on that. Uh, but uh, the thing is because Japan has been using enzymatic methods since 1990s and US has been using it since 2010 uh, and European Union doesn't have uh, the standardized method yet. So there is a significant confusion in the interpretation of ovarian cancer trials that used carboplatin and platytaxel. Because if you see the trials done in Japan, they have a significant percentage of side effects. Uh, the, the adverse effects like in uh, neutropenia and thrombocytopenia is significantly higher because they have been using the enzymatic method which leads to overdose of carboplatin. So those clinical trials should be interpreted with caution. So as we discussed, like the US started using the enzymatic method since the end of 2010. So on October 22, 2010, the National Cancer Institute, it issued a letter for all the treating physicians or investigators who are using carboplatin. And the main thing they highlighted was, if they are using enzymatic method, then the formula, if they use carbon formula, then the dose of carboplatin will be higher and it could result in increased toxicity. So the gynecology oncology group, the famous GOG, they started advising to use the capping value of GFR at 125 milliliters per minute. So if we use this capping value, the highest possible value we can use is 125. And if we do this, then the maximum possible dose of carboplatin we can use will be 900 milligram for AUC of 6, 750 milligram for AUC of 5 and so on. And another important thing was uh, the gynecology oncology group suggested to use cockcroft gold equation instead of the jellyfish equation. So nowadays everyone is using the cockcroft gold equation. And this was a very famous paper in the British Journal of Cancer published by Yui Tiando. He is my professor right now. And he suggested that in order to avoid this higher dose of carboplatin and its side effects, we need to use a correction factor of 0.2 in the denominator while calculating the top of, while calculating the creatinine clearance rate. But I'm not exactly sure whether the same factor can be used for Nepalese population or the European population or not, because this was a Japanese study. Now, this is my final slide. Uh, so the final recommendation is we need to use the inulin based GFR which is the exact value of GFR under some circumstances and what are those circumstances? For example, stage 1 testicular seminoma because the adjuvant treatment of stage 1 sem uh, testicular seminoma is one single dose of carboplatin. So that one single dose of carboplatin becomes very important because it's just one dose. So we need to give the exact value, the exact dose of carboplatin. So this was a paper published in March of this year in Annals of Oncology which said that if we use the formula based dosing of carboplatin then we are at a risk of under treating them and the 5 year recurrence increases. So we need to use the exact value of GFR so we should prefer inulin based GFR. And another, if we can't do that the next best thing is to measure the complete 24 hour urinary clearance. And uh, one, one important thing is uh, when we are using the jellyfish equation or the CKD EPI equation, we get in terms of milliliter per minute per meter square. But in Calvert's formula, we need to use milliliter per minute. So we need to back convert it in terms of milliliter per minute. But if we are using Cockcroft-Gold equation, uh, no back conversion is necessary. Uh, so we need to stick to one system consistently, whether it's Cockcroft-Gold or jellyfish or the CKD EPI. Thank you very much.